Greetings once again. I'm John, and today we're going to look at Santa Monica Pier, both its birth in 1909 and how it grew into an amusement center throughout the years, and what it was like as Pacific Ocean Park in 1958. This isn't going to be a history of the pier by any means. Today I'm going to focus on how the pier began as a small amusement park and grew into Pacific Ocean Park, otherwise known as P.O.P. in the mid-50s. And near the end, a collage of home movies. The pier first opened September 9th, 1909. Originally built to solve the city's growing sewage problem, the pier's primary function was to funnel waste 1,600 feet from a treatment plant at its eastern end out into the ocean, a service that gladly ended by 1928. But September 9, 1909, what people were really celebrating on that day was the fact that the Santa Monica Pier was only the second in the world proceeded only by one in Atlantic City, to be made entirely out of concrete. It was considered an engineering marvel for its time. The evolution from fishing community to world-famous amusement pier can be credited to entrepreneur Charles Loaf, a legendary woodcarver who built the wooden carousel at Coney Island and crafted more than 40 carousels in his lifetime. He leased the land immediately south of the pier and built what would become the Loaf Pleasure Pier, an addition to the original in 1916. Let me show you some of the rides and attractions Loaf's brought to his Pleasure Pier. After that, I'll show some of the changes made both to the rides or names of the rides as the pier changed ownership many times leading up to Pacific Ocean Park. Just one year later, he had developed it to include the Hippodrome Carousel Building, the Blue Streak Racer Roller Coaster, the Whip, and Aeroscope. In 1924, Loaf added the La Monica Ballroom, open to become the site of many first-time national radio and television broadcasts, as well as dances, and the largest dance hall in its time. To the left in June of 1916 was where the Blue Streak Racer sat, the first coaster on the pier. Later a newer and larger coaster put in its place named the Whirlwind Dipper in 1924, after Blue Streak was damaged by storm and the pier was under new management. And to the right, built by Loaf in 1922, is the Hippodrome building which holds the carousel or merry-go-round. The Hippodrome and carousel was designated a U.S. National Historic Landmark in 1975. Loaf also added many other items like bowling and billiards building, a funhouse, and picnic pavilion. The racing roller coaster, originally featured at the 1915 San Diego Exposition, was dismantled and moved to Santa Monica Pier. Standing at a height of 60 feet and featuring a rather impressive track length of 3,600 feet, it followed a small double out and back route with one large hill in the middle. Loaf's Long Beach factory fabricated the world's largest circle swing and a menagerie animal carousel. Among the many additions planned, only the restaurant was completed when Charles Loaf died on July 1, 1918, at the age of 66. The pier's future plans were put on hold. In its lifetime, the pier changed hands so many times, but that's not what I'm going to get into here. But I do need to talk about some of the people involved because it relates to some of the changes. For example, a man named Harris had his own involvement. Harris learned of a colorful crew of citizens who banded together in 1972 to save the pier from destruction. He later detailed that story in his play called Save the Pier. Harris's own history with the pier began in 1989 when he started working as a bartender at the Bathhouse Restaurant where Bubba Gump Shrimp Company stands today. Harris' interest in the pier 
grew as he was promoted to general manager of the boathouse and eventually became the weekend activities coordinator for the Santa Monica Pier Restoration Corporation. In addition to writing the pier's official history book, he created Docent Led Tours. So the days of Charles Loroff, Ernest Pickering, Loroff's son, Santa Monica Amusement Company, Charles Lick, Walter Newcomb has come to an end. Enter POP, otherwise known as Pacific Ocean Park. Purchased in 1956 by CBS and Los Angeles Turf Club, Ocean Park Pier underwent two years of renovation before reopening as the beloved sea-themed Pacific Ocean Park. Union 76 Ocean Highway. Drivers of these miniature, futuristic-looking cars drove along a causeway on the edge of the pier. You're looking at the ocean highway cars. You drove in a triangulated semi-oval with the ocean waves just below to your left and a 75-foot drop to the ocean. As you can see, there is the first location of the bumper cars later moved to the other side of the pier when that location was damaged. The High Boy was a wooden roller coaster that opened in the 1930s and in its place became the Sea Serpent in 1959. A Ferris wheel and two double Ferris wheels called the Space Wheels and Bumper Cars. Among the many rides and attractions, there's Sea Circus. 2,000 people could watch performing dolphins and sea lion shows feed the seals in the seal pool. Diving bells. Passengers in leaky diving bells were pushed underwater by hydraulic pistons. Views of aquatic life through porthole glass. Ocean Skyway. Bubble gondolas transported passengers on a half mile ride 75 feet above the Pacific to the end of the pier and back. Whirlpool. A centrifuge that pinned riders to the spinning walls as they dropped the floor beneath them and over 13 other main rides. Now let's go back in time to 1958 when Pacific Ocean Park first opened. Enter 1958 when Santa Monica Pier was four times its size it is today.
I hope you enjoyed this video. And I'll see you in the next one. Watch closely and remember when.